Greetings and salutations. I'm diving straight back into it. So here we go. Ethan. Hope. Were you expecting someone else, you dolt? Okay, sorry. I'm super uneasy, so I'm talking nonsense. Yeah, I'm uneasy too. And that was completely true. I just... Look. Am I distracting you right now? You are, and I'm very happy about that. Go on, please. That's great. Look, it didn't come off well at breakfast, right? Yes. I'm sorry I'm being awful. No, I'm sorry. Both of us have it hard right now, so let's try not to fight, okay? Great idea. Why don't we go out tonight? Save for groceries. Counts is going out if you ask me. I'll go crazy being cooped up like that. Oh, so that's what's been driving me nuts. Should go out for zucchini more often. So, what do you have to say? Oh, sorry. So, what do you say? Okay, we're all we're going to buy all the zucchini tonight. Hope laughed. And Ethan suddenly realised that the blood wasn't buzzing his ears. No one look, was looking at the back of his head, and as he turned around, he would only see Hope's socks that she'd left on the chair again. Hope? I love you. I love you too, very much. See you tonight. Now, for finishing the call, he turned around. The socks were resting peacefully on the chair, which meant everything was okay. I went back to the mail, and only noticed several new letters. Two of them were from his counterpart. He hesitated. He had already decided his course of action concerning the question, so there was no harm in taking a look. He wouldn't feel any guilt. After all, he'd done more, far more than he should have. Of course, he's a lifesaver for those wanting to sell books, mentioning historical accuracy, but no intention of pay for it properly. So what? He doesn't have to do a perfect job for free. Now he doesn't even have to work for free. That's what Ethan thought. So he opened the two letters he got and changed his highly reasonable decision. His counterpart was asking how soon he was getting an answer. So... This happened after all. The tone was very polite and apologetic. He wasn't expecting anything, but he really, really needed the help of someone competent. According to the emails, he wasn't doing very well. Paul might have been suffering from insomnia for an insane amount of time, and it seems he too is beginning imagining things. So as if Ethan saw himself on the outside. So he suddenly felt very sorry for his acquaintance. Of course, he'd become feeling sorry for him earlier, but now Ethan felt a sharp, bitter pity. He realised that if he helps his acquaintance, he would help himself, but he steps back. What value is a specialist who's afraid of a little challenge? As Hope said, the career ladder is made of form. Of course, he would no longer worked in an office, but professional growth requires twice as much effort if you're self-employed. Besides, Ethan had Hope. Hope never gave in easily and forgets such socks on the chair. Hope would love them very much. Hope would go to the store with him tonight because he cooped up would drive one crazy. That's what would be happening to his acquaintance right now. Ethan had to help him. Not because of money, but because he could. Because it was the right thing to do. They, when they both finished their projects, they would both have a good rest. Maybe they'd go out for a glass of beer together. So Ethan thought and went back to the question newfound strength. Pages of the book did not rustle in the far corners of the room. The shadows weren't wandering in the corridor, and certainly no one was looking at the back of his head until evening. In the evening, Hope came back. Hope looked up for a magazine and leant over the, uh, leaned over the armrest. You had a call from the agency? Ethan just got back from the shower. Frozen place clutching the tower at his waist. Something cold stirred uncomfortably in his stomach. The project. He completely forgot at the agency project. It'd be more than two weeks. The deadline was very close. He started for the phone. Hope but waved her hand lazily. Don't worry, I picked up. What did you tell him? I told them you'd stop eating, sleeping, and loving anything other than work. So they'd get their files all fi uh, nice and shiny. Pretty accurate, huh? Yeah. Just don't pick up my phone again, okay? Hope shrugged. Sure. I mean, it was you who asked me to answer the calls in the first place. Yes, I know. Just when I started working for them, it was important to let them see I was always in touch. Now I've passed the probation period, there's no point piling this on you any longer. Thank you for covering for me. No problem. If you're, keep, if you're getting a call and I'm not too lazy to pick it, uh, I can keep watching your back. No, you really shouldn't. This project is complicated. I'd rather deal with it myself. Ethan sat rigid. He never considered himself a good liar, but Hope didn't seem to notice anything. She sighed and pretended to be upset and rolled her eyes.
Well now, I guess I've been fired from the unpaid secretary position without any honours or compensation. Capitalism sucks. Ethan leaned over and took a, a strand of blonde hair behind her ear and looked into her eyes. His hands remained on Hope's cheek. Your help is very important to me. Hope went, uh, Hope's hand went over his and she closed her eyes. I know. Could have done it. I couldn't have done it without you. What else is new? He kissed. When Hope pulled away, she looked pleased, a sly, slight smile on her lips. You still going to the store? No, I'm not sure. Reese reached over again, but the phone gave a shrill ring. The phone call this morning even turned off the silent mode. Oh well. My city needs me. Ethan pressed his, uh, bri Ethan briefly pressed his lips to her forehead. Hope sighed and slapped his ass. God exists. He really wants us to buy some zucchini. I'll go and get dressed. The calls from the agency. They need more details and dates. Uh, details and dates. He went into the hallway and tried to make it sound plausible as he could. He understood the deadline is very close. No, there was no serious hitches in the work. Yes, he will send everything on time. When the f call finally ended, and Ethan's neck and face were flushed by this time, he was a lousy liar after all. He even had to catch his breath. When he returned to his room, Hope was reaching for his laptop. What are you doing? He, uh, Hope glanced at him over his shoulder. Sometimes she looked surprised. Nothing special, we just want to print out some uh, discount coupons. What about it? Ethan left a couple of files open, tabs open. Nothing to do with the agency project, he didn't want Hope to see them. After all, she knew enough about his projects to serve as some sort of secretary. All the projects except the one Ethan sh um, shouldn't have taken because it wasn't paid for. Made his fears were irrational. Maybe Hope won't blame him. Uh, Ethan felt ashamed and he wanted to take any chances after what happened this morning. I have lots of uh, unsafe files in there. Some important information might get lost. Can I print those coupons myself? Ethan felt the uh, heat rise in his neck and cheeks. Hope stared at him for a few seconds. Ethan couldn't read the expression on her face and that creeped him out. He was ready to hear the reproaches, even agree with them in his mind, but Hope simply uh, walked away. Sure. I'll send them to your mail. Yeah, I'm, she's not annoyed at him for what he thinks he's going to be annoyed at. She's annoyed at him for the lack of trust. They spent most of the way to the store in tense silence. A few times Ethan asked something, make sure still was, uh, Hope was still talking to him. Hope was, though, the answers were dry and she never attempted to make a joke. It's not that bad, Ethan told himself. It's not that bad at all. If you repeat it again and again, you can buy a little time, but in the end, anxiety will still prevail. Always does. Ethan's mind quickly uh, figured out the owner was trying to trick it and spat out the chewing gum. At that moment, Ethan got caught in the avalanche of thoughts he didn't want to deal with, and he couldn't in, in his current state. Something had to be done, to be said, but what? Maybe he should actually do something after all. Ethan imagined touching Hope's fingers and immediately saw her hand pulling back, her eyes glistening. She always opened her mouth to ask questions that Ethan had no answer to. They'd have to talk one way or another. Ethan didn't know where to start with burying himself even deeper. He'd been thinking about it the whole way, but he never came up with anything. A huge supermarket on the, was on the next block. A, hu a place they'd long dubbed the store was bursting with life, rather than despite the uh, despite the rather late hour. Oh, sorry, I'm tripping over my tongue today. Yeah. Anyway, as soon as they entered the large glass doors, the tension began to come off on its own. The carts were scarce, but Ethan got one of them in exchange for a coupon. Hope gave him a thumbs up with not bad, not bad at all, expression on her face. Hope enthusiastically presented a huge, colourful, uh, utterly ludicrous mug, and Ethan immediately agreed to have to buy it. They tried to find a pair for the mug, but the brooding supermarket employee said it was the last one. They were a little disappointed, but at least it was something. Looking for a mug was, uh, looking for the mug was the thing that finally did the trick. Now they were huddled together, looking for their favourite treats and arguing about which breakfast cereal was the best. That's how it was until they reached the meat department. I'll go pick something out before it's all cleared. Hope nodded absently. She was stuck at one of the big fridges in the middle of the hall. Okay. I'll be waiting for you here then. Oh, oh okay, I'll be waiting for you here. Um, the, mo uh, the meat shelves were half empty, as usual this hour. Ethan was hoping to find a steak or some mince meat. How we soon have forgot about both? There was a girl standing by one of the shelves. 
Ethan couldn't see her face. Only her dark, um, sorry, only her pale back under a white dress with thin, uh, white dress with thin stripes, and also dishevelled dark hair. Ethan's cheek was stung with cold, as if his face was lying on the shelf in one of those uh, refrigerated display cases. Just between the pork ribs and a lonely uh, ribeye in the black polystyrene foam tray. Is that her? He even took a few certain certain steps forward. And he stepped back, almost knocking over a nice old lady. He couldn't even muster apology. He grabbed the first thing that came to hand and turned around to uh, the nearest show, uh, row of shelves. He tried not to run. Because it would have looked too stupid, he even explained to himself as he reached the end of the row and peered around the corner. The girl was still picking out meat. Isn't that what you're doing now, stupid? For for sure it is, he even agreed with himself. The cold no, no longer burned his cheek in the girl. The girl seemed quite ordinary, except she was dressed too tightly for the current weather, but that was still not a crime considered in any of the states. <clears throat> I'm sorry, it was still not considered a crime in any of the states. What is with me? I'm, I'm reading the sentences backwards. I do apologise. I'm. T oh, well. Anyway, he even smiled to his own thoughts. Generally speaking, the girl was rather attractive and her light cloth was allowing one to fully appreciate it. Her thin waist passed into the seductive curve of her hips and beneath the folds of her white fabric, one can make out around buttocks. Like, now you're staring far too hard, mate. You're, you've got a partner. Uh, huh? I was asking broccoli or Brussels sprouts. Hope stood still with two colourful packets in her hand, looking at the even questioningly. He blinked several times as squinting if he just stepped out of the bright light from a darkened room. When he get back to Hope, why was he holding uh, why was he holding a bottle of Fousing Island's dressing? I don't know. He was a little dizzy. Are you alright? Yeah. Yeah, never mind. Sorry, I was just lost in thought. Hope tried not to look in the direction Ethan was uh, focusing on for so long. She really tried, but sometimes some trying isn't enough no matter how much effort you put in. The very moment the dark um, dark-haired uh, girl's light dress was floating away from the meat shelves. She must have finally made her choice. I see. For a moment, Ethan thought both past, uh, colourful plastic bags were about to slap him in the face. I hope you smiled and tossed the bags in the cart. Ethan heard them crunch lightly, uh, loudly as they hit the bottom. Well, let's take both. Variety is the spice of life. Eee. I mean, he in her eyes, he could have um, popped back and just be waiting for her to move. <laughs> they still haven't bought any zucchini. A true crime has occurred there. That night he had another dream about the white room. The walls were still trembling softly in the cold light. Everything in the room, including the air, was oozing tension, anguishing in anticipation of what was about to happen. Now, something really was about to happen, no doubt about it. Even suddenly realised he was looking at the roo uh, room from a ro odd angle. He seems to be standing on something, but he couldn't feel anything under his feet. No support. He tried to look down and only saw some shimmering air. He had no legs. Nothing above the missing legs. As if he was not there. Or rather, he was the shimmering air. The chip ceiling. The walls. That were still trembling. He was the red sofa standing a little way from the centre. And a couple of unremarkable white doors on the opposite walls of the room were not there last time. And that should not have been there. Nothing can be done about it now. The doors have appeared and nothing can be done about it now. The lights grew dim, now pulsating um, noticeably. They're still emanating from the room in its entirety, reflecting from the white walls, but most of all, from the twin bra on the wall between the two, um, two doors that were not supposed to be there. For some reason, he even tried to catch the rhythm of light with his uh, breath, yet he couldn't. There were two figures sitting on the sofa, one fair, the other dark. The dark one came into the room through one of the doors, but Ethan couldn't guess which one. The fair one was Hope. Hope, what are you doing here? You can't be here. You have to leave right now or something will happen. The pulsing of light became fast. The dark one moved to Hope and took the blonde strand behind her ear. Something was happening very slowly as if under underwater. There was something odd about the dark one. Something about her was wrong, but Ethan couldn't guess what. 
She leaned towards Hope's ear and covered her mouth with her hand. And uh, Hope leaned towards her, listening very carefully for the mutual secret amongst themselves. Something was about to happen. They both looked at Ethan, even though Ethan wasn't there here. Or rather, he was nowhere because no white uh, room ever existed. Then one of them smiled. The dark one's uh, fingers slid down Hope's chin. Soft round line. And they were no longer looking at Ethan, only at each other very closely and slowly inhaling the light. The dark one stroked at Hope's cheek and there was no light left between their ajar lips as they collided. Ethan saw the drops of saliva uh, glistening on their lips. The dark one licked her lips and raised her tongue to make space for the long black snake as it got out of her mouth. The snake swayed, tasting air with its own tongue and reached out to Hope. Hope closed her eyes. Now the snake was stroking her cheek, long and black, over and over, again in spiral, always in a spiral. Hope reached that band that covered her eyes, and the dark, yeah. Hope reached for that band that covered her eyes, and the and the dark girl, uh, the dark girl reached for her hand. Their fingers entwining, and the light between their lips melted, as always happens at sunrise. It's the weirdest description of a kiss I have ever read. <laughs> Yet it was no snake; it was just a black ribbon, a poisonous ribbon covered in scales. The pulse of the room became faster. One of the lamps be uh, came into an eclipse. She has a number of faces, that's a clue. The bodies of the two girls merged on the red sofa, and his own flesh was shaking and shrinking. Ligaments, valves, bones, vessels, and places where they came very close to the shabby red upholstery. His heart rate became faster. Faster, faster. And then something happened. Ethan woke up. His breath bubbling in his throat. The ceiling above him was flared with an immeasurable darkness, and down below his stomach he felt uh, searing heat. The heat was so intense, Ethan had to sneak into the bathroom, and as the old man used to say, he had to squeeze it off. Not just once, but whopping two. Yeah, too, too much information there. Okay, after Ethan loomed over the sink, he was looking himself in a small rectangular mirror for quite a while, at some point his lips trembling. Ethan did not wait to see where this was going. He spat into the sink and let the water... Uh, let the water in for a while. He turned the lights off. Ethan didn't want morning to come. He didn't want to wake up to see a hidden grudge in Hope's eyes, to listen to the awkward silence and seize every opportunity, uh, and, and to seize every opportunity to say a word to break it. But morning did come, and Ethan was in for a surprise. Everything was fine, very much so. Hope got up early to make a superior breakfast, the kind Ethan was never able to cook, when even when he where he wanted to. She was talking to him. She was joking. She listened to at least, listed at least ten places they would go after when their schedules became more relaxed. Night, nightmares seemed to be over. He simply washed away down the drain with the rest of the things, excess that he used to have in his body. The image was so real that um, Ethan got completely relaxed, let his guard down, dazed by the cute nonsense, waffles with cream and delicious Turkish coffee. Then Hope asked the question, Do you think a darker hair colour would suit me? The coffee uh, suddenly turned solid and stuck in his throat. Ethan felt if it wasn't coffee at all but finely ground glass. He coughed. What? Hope put her elbows on the table, sipped from her mug and nothing had happened. I was just thinking about becoming a brunette. What do you say? In my eyes, she is a brunette. She's got brown hair in the picture. I don't know. I'm fine with everything as it is. As long as you like it, I guess. Tiny pieces of glass were scratching him from the inside. He even tried to clear his throat, but it didn't get much better. Why are you thinking about it? Also, there's a new TV program, so um, we're going to take a quick break and have a look what weirdness has now popped up on this. How to make tomato soup. At some point, they had to remove her fingernail, an accident in the factory. She got lost. It's is legal, but painful still. The devil comes from the little cracks. They don't tell you that. Um, sorry, they don't tell you at school. Oh no, no, it's still going. No time to cook. We got an answer on the shelf. Tomato soup. 
made with fresh tomatoes? And, and, and I wish you'd never been born. Something has changed in here as well. Awful day, I was crazy scared for mum. She'll, uh, she says she'll have some da uh, days off and we're watching movies and eat waffles. I'd love that, but she looks very sad. I don't know what to do. January 11th. The new school is okay. I wish I could make friends with someone, though. Mum is working late again. It's fine. I lifted a very heavy box when we moved in, and Mum can pick it up herself. I'm a big boy now. Big boys aren't afraid of anything. I'll just turn on the lights and watch TV with Timo and my friends. Only the cool stuff of animals and robots or aliens, but not the creepy kind. Anyway. So more strangeness in the side. I mean, already things are strange, but this makes it even weirder. Ethan struggled to speak. He felt as uh, falling into a pit and the air was whistling in his ears. Well, one has to change from time to time. Variety is good, isn't that right? She's looking up a sip. Besides, I find plenty of dark hair all over the apartment. Not very long, you know, but not too short either. About this length? Or uh, even before uh, Hope tapped her neck with the edge of her hand, even knew where the hand would stop. And so I thought, if I go brunette, I can believe those hairs are mine. Hope's lips stretched and the corners of her mouth turned up. She wasn't smiling. This isn't happening. This can't be happening. I must be still asleep. This is just a dream, just a shitty dream, and it won't end. Now Ethan desperately wanted morning to come, but morning just wouldn't come for the second time in a day. Hope leaned back in a chair and looked in with her head head on one side, a fake smile smothered on her lips. Something had to be done, all of it. Right about this now. Alright. We're going to go with the truth. She probably won't believe it. Look, something strange is going on. Yeah. I could tell as much. Hope I'm serious. Something strange is going on I have no explanations. Neither good, nor bad, none at all. Oh, really? Actually, I might have an idea or two. Wait. I'm not saying that yesterday in the store, even. Stop short. Go on. Took a deep breath and closed his eyes. I'm not saying I didn't scare that girl. I did, and it's obvious. I was trying to... She reminds me of someone, and I was trying to figure out if I was mistaken. I know what it looks like, and it's my fault. Uh, even decided to admit the part about the well-rounded buttocks under the light-flowing fabric. Yeah, that's a good one, mate. You, that's the best choice you've made since we started this. Not because he wanted to look better, but he knew it would hurt Hope, and he really didn't want to hurt her. Boah, that's a load of garbage. Please forgive me if you can. I did a shitty thing, but I'm really sorry. Wait, now you just sound like you you, you were cheating on her. Alright, he put his hand on the table so her fingers touched a little. Hope didn't move away. Next time we go shopping, you can stare at anyone you like. I'll try my best not to cry. Can't promise anything, though. Hope wins, but even knew that she was still hiding a smile. All right then. Again, keep in mind I'll pick the hottest ones. I don't stand a chance, do I? She smiled wide and ruffled his hair. Absolutely. And about the hairs, I hope this, her smile disappeared without a trace. I don't know where they came from. Seriously, there's something wrong here. Ethan, please, I don't want to. No, listen, please. I really think some intruder's getting us out of our apartment somehow. Do you believe me? I hope looks in for a while. Then she shivered. Damn you, Ethan. Yes! I do believe you. I don't understand how this is happening or what they want, but I think it's time to call the police and let them sort it out. It's their job, after all. Maybe you should actually call Laura first. I think it's time. Yes, I'll do that as well. Hope pressed his hand. Let's promise each other we won't go crazy, okay? I also see things. All sorts of things. I mean, sometimes you find hairs, just some damn hairs, and you start questioning everything. We just need to get through these dark times somehow. And it'll get better. Sure it will. I mean, she's confessed to letting in a cat. But I guess those are too long for cat hairs. Hope pressed his hand again and brought from the table. Okay, I have to go now. I'll probably be late. We'll have to hold up, uh, hold up at work today. Should meet you after? Maybe. I'll call you later, I guess. Hope. I love you. I love you too. Very much. Don't forget to call Laura. Ethan nodded absently. 
and when the door shut behind Hope, even called Laura. Hope found Laura a long time ago. Seems like Laura helped her a lot, at least what Hope herself said. But even didn't know any of the details, nor did he want to, since Hope hadn't told him. After all, psychotherapy is a very personal matter. So personal, he even felt like if he was take, standing naked in the middle of a busy street when he had to describe what happened to him. Apparently, one could get used to this too, as by the middle of the story, he was sparing no details. Even surprised when he mentioned disturbing emails from his contact, but kind of getting on his nerves, Laura peeked up. You're saying that you've recently come quite close to your acquaintance. You emphasised you tried to help him, right? Yes. Something like that? Contact's letters be covered, uh, contain vivid, disturbing imagery, yes? Imaginary uh, that evokes a certain response from you. Is, I'm sorry, imagery that evokes a certain response from you, is that right? You could say that. He's a writer, after all. Vivid uh, images are his livelihood. Do you know what uh, induced delusion disorder is, Mr. Harrison? Ethan tried to recall. Definitely read about it, but didn't go into much detail. Is that the thing that explains mass insanity? Like the dancing plague of 1518 in uh, Strasbourg? That's right. This disorder is also called... Um, Philodox? A madness for two? Sounds romantic, doesn't it? Laura giggled. Even for... Um, even thought she herself was not all too sane. Of course she wasn't. She has to deal with guys like me all the time. But Laura already returned to her usual tone, calmed and measured. This condition causes perfectly healthy people to experience various let's say negative effects. It works like this. We have a source of delirium, and those who perceive it, one or more people, as you correctly noted, sometimes this disorder can make it true on a massive scale. There's usually an emotional connection between the um, victims of this condition. Your wife is also at risk, unfortunately. Laura paused. I can't make a diagnosis in such a format, Mr. Harrison. However, I think you need to limit your contact with your acquaintance at least for a time being. You might be the source of sort of the unpleasant state you're experiencing. Would you like to make an um, Would you like to make an appointment for consultation? Well, that's going to be frigging expensive. Ethan politely declined. And with that, I've overrun slightly, but I will catch you next time.